I'm uh, Keegan Wheat. I'm the poetry editor at Defunct, and I'm going to be introducing um, an incredible poet, uh, Roberto Tada. Um, he is the author of Still Nowhere in an Empty Vastness, episodes in the cultural poetics and Latinx imagination of the Americas. His poetry collections include Full Foreground, Exposition Park, Mirrors for Gold, and Selected Poems in Spanish Translation, Todo en Alo in El Ora. An art historian, he has published National Camera Photography in Mexico's Image Environment, a study on pioneering Chicana conceptual artist Celia Alvarez Munoz, and such catalog essays as Los Angeles Snapshots in Now Dig This, Art in Black Los Angeles, 1960 through 1980. He is the Hugh Roy and Lily Crahan's Cullen Distinguished Professor in Creative Writing and Art History at the University of Houston. <clears throat> so uh, I can't wait for his reading, Roberto. Thank you, Keegan. Thank you for the kind introduction. So I was uh, very pleased to be a part of this reading and conversation. And like so many of us, there have been lots of very long and unsettling and uncertain moments. And in one of those, as we've all been on the internet, most, most of the time or online, I got a um, promotional email from a Brazilian publishing company called Compañia das Letras. And it included a poem by a poet that I had not read before, a Portuguese poet, uh, Sofia, the, with the very um, uh, uh, extravagant name of Sofia de Melo Brainer Anderson, who was born in Oporto in Portugal in 1919, uh, lived and worked in Lisbon and died in 2004. And it seemed clear to me why the editors had chosen this poem. And so I immediately felt it the kind of urgency to translate something short. It's a, it's, a, it's a fairly traditional poem insofar as it's in quatrains and rhymes, but that, that connection to poetry and to an unknown object is I think what we were discussing earlier before we went um, sort of started the event, which is that these kinds of connections that we establish are, are about the kinds of, um, what we're looking for, what art does best, is situate us, even in our solitude, in a much larger conversation. And this is what I felt reading this poem, and it's called um, Sources, As Fontes. So maybe I'll just read the first two lines and then read my translation and end with the last two lines in Portuguese. As Fontes. Um dia cab... Sorry. Um dia quebrarei todas as pontes que ligam o meu ser vivo e total. One day I'll demolish all the bridges connecting myself alive and absolute to the agitation of the other world, and I'll calmly ascend the sources. I'll journey even to the sources where abundance, clear splendor, a promise made to me forever, overflows the unfinished side of love. I'll drink the light of daybreak, drink the voice of that promise traveling in me and out like an aircraft in flight. And once inside, I'll satisfy the sum of myself. Irei beber a luz e o amanhecer. Irei beber a voz dessa promessa que às vezes como um voo me atravessa. In nela comprirei todo o meu ser. I thought I'd read one translation, another translation by a poet that I've been involved with for the last 20 years. Um, and there's an essay on him in Still Nowhere in an Empty Vastness, and that's the Cuban mid century modernist, uh, Jose Lezama Lima, who passed in the 1970s. And this was part of his last book, though, was, a, it was his posthumous book called Los Fragmentos a Su Iman, or The Fragments Drawn by Charm. And it has a kind of circus uh, effervescence or joy that much of his work that, in, that involved animals and uh, a kind of three ring um, uh, sort of animation that takes place. 
and this is called The Staircase and the Ant. At midnight, the ant descends the hotel staircase. It attempts to follow the expanse of a straight line. Sometimes it stops, what labyrinths will it solve? But each step so delays the ants as to be startling. It examines the step as if looking for the bulk its back needs, then rushes along as though singing. It is free of all commitment, but suddenly discovers a snippet of wing and hurries to reach the unfamiliar square. It rejoices with each step and then smugly descends to another and frolics as though along the beach. The ant finds joy as overlord of the staircase. It knows objectives will be met. The shoe, able to crush it, brushes by but leaves behind a scrap of tobacco, a, poured, a, a bored petal, salt that burns the dominant eyes. It reigns over the staircase and has sauntered each step with the elegance of an English lady who carries the garbage to the corner to a green can featuring the English crown clawed by two leopards. That's a poem from, he would date his poems at the end of this particular book in a very uh, idiosyncratic way. So he dates it 5 December and 1974. So then I'll just read two poems uh, of, of my own um, design um, from an unpublished manuscript called Why the, Why the Assembly Disbanded. And some of these poems have a somewhat of a speculative, uh, otherworldly setting. Sometimes it's a dream setting. Sometimes it's one in maybe a, an unknown or uninhabitable or as yet inhabited future. And it too wants to activate a kind of uh, dramaturgy of different figures. This is called Anvil and Bellows. In all manners, Mr. Tourniquet intoned attention turning to my treatment, many times ignored, many times identical to the carbonate castle, many times in tribal paint, unbridled scuttlebutt stargaze, releasing children palsied in germinal burst. Surface made of metal, Mrs. Skeleton Key, it's a cruel copy tantamount to the emotion precinct, tantamount to the other story imprint, to the opposite self, complete with pigment, actually, archaic catalog of chattel and usufruct, whose characters include Professor Blind Eye Turning, Sister Bulletproof Jacket, Reverend Dead Man Gully, Mr. Secretary General of the Global Farm Security. Birth lines intersect here with the turnstile attorneys whose testimony pictograms a timetable into gossip and gainsay the evidence of animals so, so menaced by what surrounds these laws with mindful hand and fodder as to inaugurate the weightless stranger bothering disimbursement with alleged methods that stain and stoke, that evermore extricate our ancestor from wonders one and all the end. Then the final credits run with life forms and we stray either from intimacy or the accident part emerges between miniature movement and application, austerity and surface, superposition and plane, oh, river palms and clock face, stairwell and flagstone, aspects of a method verily over landscape with gazebo adding Bethlehem rose or clump green, wax warm layers of synthetic skin, meat muddled anniversary, Involuntary bromide book bound to inlay the marriage of word paste and tooth told domina, this minion font and frontage. Over putty and pages reproduced, lower quadrant anvil, vertical bellows and antelope in upward red, quick, quick, the syllables to stagger, the enumerated forethought as when cobalt woodwinds issue silver pearls. And I think I'll end with this poem. As you can tell, some of these are indebted to a kind of surrealist practice that, uh, that looks for the stupefying energy of images. And this is 
the poem that gives the book its title, or why the assembly disbanded as before. Hosanna in the borderline cinder block warehouse, as much applause as possible to collapse inside an ambulance now that conveys the intravenous bags and bottle holder, 27 stones from here to the Idlewild, to the gun fields. It's a place you find automaton nurses who labor in green gray subterfuge in all over stripes. A round of punches to the lower jaw for my part in the main, so I get it now. I'm the chosen one for reassignment, face so altered as to beguile. This is enemy convenient, a purview suitable to very new cosmetic methods. Question is, the admin, diazepam, and other hypodermics, were they counteractive or now consistent with enough cases as to compel canvassers to anticipate first signs of panic, sleepwalker antecedents, tray table in upright position, crushed ice out of open mouth, air-conditioned ward, redolent of superstores and tattoo shops, or was it morphine sulfate in protocols applied to disable the congenital twins? Here's the world news. To junk science prizes, wax candy lips in tone of flawless, if always accented sentence, the kind of talking from another world where my mother was Marlo Thomas and there were rival techniques contributed to the celebrity of my seven-sided disappearance. Or was that all my enuresis when I doubled in size as from her pocketbook, adorable but already diminishing? <laughs>